years, five years, Congress has maintained a near flawless record of uselessness. But even <laughs> with their top obstructionists, things were bound to fall through the cracks. An elementary school gets named, a bridge gets fixed up, expanded health care coverage gets passed. Oh. <laughs> but since that slip up, the House has voted to repeal or defund Obamacare 37 times. Not because they're stubborn, they have no short-term memories. <laughs> It's covered. <laughs> but while Congress inhabits a fantasy world where you can turn back history by wishing hard enough, <laughs> governors live in actual states with actual poor people who need actual medical attention. Before the Affordable Care Act, we had two programs that took care of poor people. One was Medicaid. The other was the emergency room. The first one, <laughs> modestly priced, paid for by the government. The other, we pretend not to pay for, and is the reason one Advil in the hospital is $12,000. So, <laughs> under Obamacare, the federal government will pick up most of the tab to expand Medicaid coverage in the states to cover more people. All the governors do have to say the magic word, yes. They don't even have to say, please. <laughs> Thumbs up will do. <laughs> Seems like a total no-brainer for the governors. There are already 15 states with Republican governors who said they will not participate in the Medicaid expansion. Ah, oh, the no-brain states. <laughs> We're talking about states like uh, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina. Known collectively as America's health belt. <laughs> Rejecting expanded... Uh, boils over. Rejecting expanded Medicaid means that states are going to have to come up with their own plans. Utah's considering charity as a replacement for Medicaid <laughs> expansion. Texas just wants a bag of money with no strings attached. And of course, Iowa is going with optimism. We've got a better idea in Iowa. We're working to get people to take ownership of their own health. We're focusing on exercise and All nutrition. Right. right after we eat the world's largest fried cow lambin on a stick. <laughs> but Tennessee may have found the best Medicaid solution of all. Jessica Williams has more. States are scrambling to come up with alternatives to the Obamacare Medicaid expansion. And Tennessee has a truly innovative way to address the needs of their neediest. If you're elderly and very sick, Tennessee wants to help you with your medical bills. And there's a new 10 care program called Standard Spend Down. It helps people who are poor or even those who make too much money for Medicaid. Here's how it works. You're going to have to call a hotline and it will close as soon as they've taken information from 2,500 people. But be warned, it is the same number. Thousands of other people will be calling at the same time. Yep, it's a health care lottery. Give it up for the Tennessee Standard Spend Down! Rather than accept federal money to cover 330,000 uninsured, they award health care to only the first 2,500 callers. It's like calling the morning zoo for Rihanna tickets, except if you don't win, your diabetes goes untreated. Game of Chance enthusiast Gina Luther loves it. What idiot come up with that idea? It's playing with people's lives like you were playing a slot machine. You don't like slot machines? I love slot machines, but I don't like Russian roulette. Sounds like somebody wasn't dialing fast enough. No, I just wasn't able to call. Um, I was actually in the hospital having surgery. You snooze, you lose, Gina. Well, I know that, and I don't know why in this world that that anesthesiologist didn't wake me up. Clearly, Gina's just a sore loser. Conservative strategist Matt Kibbe explains why the state is doing the right thing. I've been talking to some folks in Tennessee. They'd be eligible for Medicaid expansion, but they're not big fans of Tennessee rejecting it. What would you say to them? I think they need to understand that Tennessee can't be everything to everybody. They have to make the budget balance. That's just the way it is. You see, Gina, the state budget must be saved from the Medicaid expansion that doesn't affect the state budget. I bet one of the lucky 2,500 winners will be more appreciative. Congratulations, Jerry! You just won the Tennessee Healthcare Lottery. You persevered, you called a million times, and now you finally got health insurance. Uh, no. Nah. No? Well, they send you application first. You fill the application out, then you send it back in, then you wait. Then, uh, it, it takes 90 days to six months to get, you know, before you know anything. 
Well, if you say it like that, it doesn't sound so great. But what about like this? Well, they send you application first. You fill the application out, then you send it back in, then you wait. Okay, so healthcare lottery winners don't actually win healthcare. But they do win a mountain of paperwork and six months of suspense. Do you have any foreign bank assets or accounts overseas? Nope. And if you think that's f***ed up, hold on, there's more. Many winners lose coverage after a year. The healthcare lottery has 3,500 winner slots, but only 1,000 are awarded at any time. Why? Who knows? The healthcare lottery reserves the right to erroneously announce the contest is over before any calls are received. Yes, this actually happened. There you have it. A solid alternative to Obamacare. Because Tennessee conservatives know you can't do everything for everybody. And sometimes that means doing nothing for the people who need it most. So keep dialing, Tennessee. Jessica Williams, we'll be right back. <laughs>